Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we have a big announcement to make about the Diz 20th anniversary party coming up on June 1st. In the news this week, Disney is being forced to pay for labor violations. Disney also addresses concerns that people who aren't fans of Avatar won't like its new Pandora edition to Animal Kingdom. And speaking of new additions to theme parks, our own Steve Porter will be with us a little bit later on from Disney's Hollywood Studios to give us a construction update. And Rhino Clavin is going to talk about a cooking class experience he had at the Portobello Yacht Club at Disney Springs a few weeks ago. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 933 for the week of March 21st, 2017. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Hi, everybody. Kevin Close. Hello. Kathy Whirling. Hi, everybody. Rhino Clavin. Hello, everyone. And back in the production nook, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hello. Who finally got a haircut. Yes, I did. Thank And God. a beard cut. Thank God. You did really you do. Hat, he, he gets to it. that point. He gets to that point where he looks as though he just gave up. Um, it is great to be back. I feel, I was going to say, it feels like it's been a month since I've done the show. And I guess with the exception of one week, it has, in fact, been a month since I've done the show. So uh, had a great time uh, in New York last week in spite of the snowstorm. Uh, got to see Bette Midler and Hello, Dolly. Got to see the revival of uh, Miss Saigon. So I'm a happy gay today. Um, and excited because we're going up to uh, see Hello, Dolly again. We are. And we're going to go see Sunset Boulevard. And we're going to go see stuff. War Paint. Yep. And so gay, 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 gay. <laughs> um, Want to just lead off in housekeeping with the big announcement we made yesterday on the site and on social media about the 20th anniversary, uh, the Diz 20th anniversary party that uh, John has been working tirelessly on for what seems like years. Forever. And 20 will, years I've been working on it. 20 <laughs> years you've been working on this party. The biggest party we've ever thrown by a mile. Um, and I will give it, let, let John have the, the pleasure of giving the details. All right. So everybody knows that our event, our 20th anniversary event, is the week of May 26th through June 4th of 2017, with that Monday through Friday being our event stuff. We're going to have a silent auction. Uh, we'll have other things going on. We haven't quite nailed we've down got the some, specifics. We've got some fun stuff. we yeah. got some fun stuff being planned right now. These guys are planning their stuff, so we'll get that added to the schedule. But as of Monday, we have a signed contract for our party, which is June 1st. It's a Thursday night. It is the actual 20th anniversary of the Diz. So excited to be celebrating on that day at Epcot from 10 p.m. to midnight. We're going to be having a huge party. When I was planning this and I was working with the folks at Disney, one of the things they said to me was, okay, you're throwing three parties in one. You know that, right? And I said, I didn't think of it that way. So this is how they sort of came up with the verbiage and the marketing for us for this. So it's actually um, going to be, we're going to have Future World East, Future World West. We're going to have a DJ. We're going to have Disney characters. We're going to have food. It will be all you can ride Soarin', all you can ride Test Track, all you can ride The Seas with Nemo and Friends, and for Kathy, all you can ride Journey into Imagination <laughs> with Figment. However, that's not all. There's more. There's more. There's people. much, much more. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more. There's more. We're going to do our own private illuminations. Ooh. This is not. We're going to have a group, and we're going to go to one place. This is not you and Pete running around with sparkles, no. right? <laughs> it's not. <really. laughs> well, we could do that. Doing I mean, maneuvers. <laughs> doing our maneuver. Um, this is not just everybody getting together in a space during Illuminations. This will be once the park shuts down, and we're in there, and we're having our party. Just for us. And having a good time just for us, our own private Illuminations reflections of Earth. So very, very excited that this has finally come together. Um, I don't have specifics on the food yet. We're going to work out those details coming up, but think more along the lines of snacks, 
Hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres type of things, not a full meal type of food. Snacks evokes images of potato chips. Well, I mean, in the past, we've done some really cool stuff. We've done, you know, um, the donut guy came and cooked his donuts, the Mm -hmm. chef and stuff like that. So think along those lines. Uh, The cost of the party is $85 per person. You have to register for our event in order to get the email that shows you how to register for the party. That seems to be a point of confusion for some folks who say, I just want to go to the party. Unfortunately, you've got to sign up for the event as well. This helps us with uh, counts, helps us with credential, having credentials made, that sort of thing. So go to the disboards. There's a big thread on the disboards about it. We'll have a link um, to, uh, link to the, all this in the, uh, the show notes page as well. And there's advertising all over the site. So please, please, please join us for what I think is going to be I'm really, cool I, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. You um, could stay on Soren and ride it over and over and over again. I, I, I uh, you know, uh, I, I've mentioned it on the show before. Uh, Soren is one of my mother's favorite rides. Uh, and it's like, you know, that in Small World because she was pregnant with me at the 64 World's Aww. Fair when she rode Small World. So we, <laughs> we always do that. We're in the Magic Kingdom. But Soren is a must do. Uh, now, she hasn't been back to the parks in a while. Uh, so we haven't done the new one yet. Okay. So I am really kind of looking forward to having that experience with her that night. Um, and, you know, it just keeps every so often, it just hits me that it's been 20 years that we've been doing this. And it, I don't know, I, I it kind of blows my mind. It, I, my, I haven't wrapped my head around it yet. Mm. I really haven't. And when I do like those moments where I really think about, I've been doing this for 20 years um, it gets to me. It really gets to me. So I have a feeling that night I'm going to be weepy. I'm going to be a weepy hot mess. Might be. So it's exciting. I also want to point out too, this is a private event. This is just for us. So no theme park admission is required. Right. You will get special credentials and you'll get into the parks. You don't have to be, you know, have a ticket to get in. So if you're planning to come that week, you can save your park ticket. This could be your park day for that. Uh, will this be yeah. capped the way we capped the Harry Potter party? Or yes. is this going to be? Okay. It will be. I don't have that number yet. Okay. Disney has put a number on the attendance that is actually quite large of people. We How many people we could fit? 50,000 people. Exactly. <laughs> much. It could be a full park. We are not going to come anywhere near that number strictly because we don't want to have a giant unruly thing that we can't. You know, we want to meet everybody. We want to have spend time we with folks. We also want it to be a... A more uh, exclusive event, right? Uh, so that you know, we—I don't know—that that, that everybody, if they, if you want to sit on soar, and you can just sit on soar. Right. No matter how large our group is, this place is going to absorb a bunch of people. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're going to—it's going to seem like you have the park to yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm very excited about this. Me so too. please head out to—you uh, can just head to the Diz homepage, uh, wdwinfo.com. There's a big link there. Uh, There's links all over the site, all over the boards. Of course, we'll have it on the show notes page. We put it up on social media. Uh, The the sign-ups are coming in fast and furious. Um, So we're going to have a great crowd. Uh, Really looking forward to the whole week. Really looking forward to the whole week. Um, So, yeah, awesome job with this, John. Thank you. I I, I, I didn't think you could surprise me uh, anymore with these parties. And uh, because I knew about Soren and I knew about Test Track. and it was really up in the air about illuminations. He'd asked me, you'd asked me like, exactly. okay, pie in the sky. Like okay, if you could have anything, what would it be? And I said, you know what I would really love? I'd love to have a, lum- a private uh, a private illuminations. And, uh, but I just didn't think that was going, going to happen. Um, and in addition, getting uh, Nemo, which is another great attraction and journey into imagination. Try not to make eye contact with Kathy. <laughs> um, I'll be there. I'll be riding it all by all myself. by yourself. Yeah. No, I'm sure you'll have a group. No, you'll of get you'll get you'll get the pity you'll get the, the pity. pity the pity vote. Um, <laughs> oh no, let's go ride that with Kathy. Yeah, that works. I think that'd be a great sort of meet for you. Mm-hmm. you yeah. Folks come over and yeah, do things. Yeah, go do that. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm bright. I'm just too bright. Sorry, I don't want to mess up my. So yeah, please, please, please bright. join us. Very, very exciting, big event for us. All right, thank you for that, John. I uh, want to remind everybody about the shows that we produce each week, every Monday. Uh, Disunplug.com and YouTube.com slash Dreams Unlimited Travel is the Dreams Unlimited Travel podcast with John, Kevin, and Tracy Heinrichs. 
And what is this week's show about, John? The past week, we released our Travel Odds and End show. What we did was we kind of did a, a thing where we collected all of these topics that didn't quite fit into a specific cruise or park or vacation experience, and we kind of brought them together and did a Travel Odds and End show. And that's what we put up Monday. I thought it went very well. I rewatched it, and I enjoyed it. This upcoming Monday, I'm going to be honest with you, we're not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, we have a video we did at the, the Dis Welcome Center, Dreams Unlimited Travel and the Dis Boards Welcome Center. It's a little short. So we are going to be recording some more shows this week, and we may do two the same day. We're not quite sure. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens. But I'm pretty sure we're going to put up that Welcome Center video with uh, Teresa giving us a tour of the Welcome Center. Awesome. All right. Thank you, John. Uh, also, every Monday, DizUnplugged.com, the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged with host Tom Bell and his team. And this week, the team helps listener Lori plan her upcoming Disneyland vacation. Now, what Lori does, doesn't know is that she pissed the team off, so they gave her all bad info. <laughs> Kidding. They didn't do that. <laughs> but it's like, a- oh, God, that sounds fun. <laughs> 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 um, so that's uh, every Monday. Um, Craig, what do we have going up Wednesday? Uh, this sorry. this Wednesday, I believe it will be the um, three. Our, yeah, sorry, Rhino, I'll let you do it because you know it more. No, well, I wasn't sure if you were confused because I released one. Uh, I, I, I released one to the Patreon people, so I'm assuming it's that same one, which yeah. is going to be the three uh, best perks or best things about being a Dizzy cast member. And it's uh, going to be myself, Craig, and Steve Porter talking in that Minnesota. All right. And that's coming up this Wednesday. Uh, of course, every Thursday, DizUnplugged.com, the universal edition of the Diz Unplugged with Craig and Rhino. And what are you talking about this week, Craig? Uh, this week, Rhino will actually be gone on a little mini trip getaway. Uh, so we will have a pre-recorded episode going up for you, no live episode. Um, but we are going to be discussing uh, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts as part of our Universal Hall of Fame series. Okay. So that'll be fun. That should be fun. And do we have anything going up for Diz Pop on Friday? It's already, uh, it's not live, but it's already done and up on the site. Look so at you, it's, I'm so uh, proud of him. It's, um, <laughs> it's this week, I figured I've never done something that's been music oriented. So this week it's all our favorite Disney music. And so I had Craig and uh, Steve join me for that one. And we're talking about some of our favorite Disney musics that, that musics, some of our da- favorite Disney music pieces that have been very present in our lives or that are just our favorites and from uh, from theme park stuff to movies to whatever. And we'll be talking about that. And then we play a little face. Uh, Craig and I go head to head in a in a little game at the end of that to see who knows, who can guess where the Disney music is from better oh, wow. than the other. Yeah. Good sentence. Yeah, I know. Really. I heard well it said. as I was well saying said. it. Well said. It's not an English show. <laughs> Good. No need grammar, this show. <laughs> Friday, I, good. I speak pretty. I speak pretty. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> All right. What else do we have for housekeeping? I'm going to plug it again. We are getting a nice big group going on our Italy sojourn trip March 24th through March 31st of next year. We are up to 74 people. That's crazy. And it just started out that we all wanted to go, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love how Let's that do works. This. Um, who wants to come with? Really, who wants to go with us? If you're interested in going, the pricing is still really good. Uh, the bottom two categories are sold out. I've explained this before. DV or V1 and V2 are sold out. DV6. The other day, I've just I booked another one today, so they found more apparently. But they are extremely you're building limited. onto the ship. Uh, they force. Are. We, there's an addition. Um, if you want to join us. It's going. It's leaving Rome, and it's going around Italy, and it ends in Venice. And it's a week-long cruise. There's a stop every day. It's on Viking Ocean. And write me, Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel. I am so excited about that. Mm, we've got a nice big group going. I'm so excited. It sounds like it's going to be awesome. Mm, it's The more I research that ship the more intrigued I am. Viking has now uh, put up actual footage of the ship. For a while, we didn't have it because it was so new. But there's now 360 coverage of the ship we're going on. Mm. And it's not like a regular cruise. No, there's it's no not. casino. This is, Damn. it holds 960 people. So it's, that's the max. So it's not a huge ship. But 
the more you look at the more you look at the vi- I made fun of Rhino for not speaking. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's karma. He's being very polite. Uh, <laughs> the more I look at the ship, the more exciting and luxurious it looks. Awesome, can't wait. All right, uh, and that's Kevin at DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com if you're interested in joining us in that little Italy cruise on Viking uh, next March. Is there anything else for housekeeping? Just a reminder, we're looking for items for our auction for the 20th anniversary. So if you have any items, it's in that mega thread on the Diz with instructions how to let us know what you'd like to donate, and we sure would appreciate it. I'm already pulling stuff. (laughs) I, f- I really thought after the last one, I really don't have anything else. I'm like, oh, who are you kidding? <laughs> oh, good. So, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of cleaning out my office to have it painted in new carpet, and it's just, I put the pile well, together. Well, I, I, I am planning, um, this will force me to do it. I am planning on redoing the studio. Um, so some of the things that you see wow. around the studio are going to be put up mm. for auction. Some good stuff. Microphones, cameras. Craig. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shopping. Right, what do you want? I really. um, also want to say too about that: you do not have to attend the event, attend the event to donate items. So right. if you're not attending, you can still donate something to help raise money for Give Kids the World. That's right. And I had somebody ask, "What do we want?" If you think somebody else would enjoy it, you know, you we'll also like never you know what somebody else right. would enjoy. I found something at the last silent auction, but had I you asked me before, I. Actually, Pete bought it for me. The chess set. He loves chess set. that chess set. Mm-hmm. It's right on my. It's right on the coffee table. As soon as you entered my house. But if someone had said to me, "What do you want?" I never would have told you. I want a chess set. Chess it set. wasn't until I saw it that yeah. I realized, "Oh, I have to have that." So. Memis Cologne. I have to buy him in in New York. That I found that. I, I love I, it when people have to buy me things. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I need him. I need him to experience awesome cologne. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, who else? Um, I just want to talk about our Patreon site really quick again. I talk about it every week. But if you want to become a contributor, you can go to patreon.com slash disunplugged. And you can donate money for as a little as you'd like. And as little or as much as you'd like from a dollar to a hundred dollars where you're going to get um, specific uh, like bonus content. You get advanced um, access to some vlogs, the minisodes shows just random uh photos that we make along the way behind the scenes views um pretty much anything that i get bored at home and i'm like you know what i got a new project to get myself and or like we'll sit and come up with an idea and sometimes we're like i don't know maybe that's not great for the public let's test it on these people first so lots of fun fun stuff like that you know yeah you're paying us to be our guinea <laughs> yes, pig pretty, great exactly. way to put it right yeah. up also i just want to say although i'm not ready to announce details um we are going to be doing some patron specific events during the 20th anniversary week. Um, I've got a couple that I um, think be pretty fun. Um, and, I, I, and I don't want to just do a meetup. I want to do something. So I've got some ideas I'm, I'm playing with right now. But we're going to do, definitely do some stuff that is patron only during the, uh, the 20th anniversary. Yeah. A way of saying thank you for your support. And I, I so. just want to give a little shout out to Angela and Eva, who uh, became top tier patrons uh, just this week with the hundred dollar level. So thank you for that contribution, and thank you everybody who for your continuing contributions as you go, because it it helps us a lot with like day to day operations. Well, it helps. Equipment. Well, it, it it helps Rhino with the operation. It does. Uh, yes. You know yeah. that's why he's going away this weekend. The it's, ones why he's tra- you mean the transition? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The hormones. Who knows? My beard's getting fuller. <laughs> He's going to become a boy. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's it. <laughs> okay. So thanks. All right. Anything else for housekeeping? All right. No throw more. it over to Johnny with the news. All right. Our first news story. Disney to pay $3.8 million for labor violations. Following a U.S. Labor Department investigation, Disney has agreed to pay out $3.8 million to 16,399 hotel and timeshare resort workers. Averaging around $233 per employee, the compensation is for violations of minimum wage, overtime, and record-keeping laws. The investigation found that employees have been working for 15 minutes pre-shift and post-shift without compensation. Disney also charged workers a uniform expense that, once deducted from their hourly wages, brought them below the federal minimum wage. Disney also failed to retain adequate records of the employees' hours worked. 700 workers employed at Old Key West Resort from as far back as November 2013 will receive compensation, 
with 15,000 employees from other resorts dating back to January 2015 also to benefit. The compensation will be, will be provided by July 31st. In a press release, Daniel White, District Director for the Wage and Hour Division in Jacksonville, said, quote, these violations are not uncommon, are found in other industries as well. And in reference to Disney, White said, quote, the Disney resorts were very cooperative throughout the investigative process. Go ahead. Do you remember a while back, it's, I, my, <coughs> my judgment of how far back we have to go to talk about it, that employees used to be paid from the minute they got to the, the changing area, but now they don't actually start getting paid until they get to... There used to be a buffer in your, in your salary that they allowed you a certain amount of time pre-shift for traveling from your car to costuming to change to get to your location. And they decided to do away with that compensation. I don't believe that's this. This to me sounds more like a bookkeeping, record keeping. Did anyone ever work in a job where you had to punch in? Yeah. 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 Uh, I remember my first job where I had to punch in, and there was a rule about if you were if you arrived eight minutes into the fifteen minutes, you were paid the whole fifteen minutes. But at seven minutes, you weren't paid for the fifteen minutes. Yeah. This sounds like that. Disney, yeah. I'll tell you what they did. So if you clock in before your shift, if you're there before it, you have the, that 15-minute window, and they don't pay you. And then if you're clocked out after, they don't pay you. And then if they change I, – I had an issue with this once. So there was like – I'm not surprised that this happened, this like payout, this lawsuit. I'm actually curious if I'm going to end up getting money from it because it's during the time I worked there or not. But – were you done with your part of the story? I'm, I'm absolutely no. I'm fascinated okay, I, what you're going to say. Okay, so I, I'm not trying to trash them or anything, but there is there were multiple events where I went to a manager and spoke with them about this particular thing because where we used to park at Hollywood Studios and where I clocked in, there was a, almost a mile in between where I had to go. So you have to get there pretty early. But then when it was really busy because of the structure of the parking lot, they would have us park at Epcot and they'd bus us over. And so that changes my commute to work by 30 to 45 minutes. Oh, really? And I was, and then on top of that, you get there and you take the bus. It's going to take at least 15 minutes for the bus to get from there to where it's dropping you off and then from there for you to clock in. And so, you know, essentially you're looking at leaving at least an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes ahead of time. So I asked, like, oh, we're going to get walk time now because if you're a cast member at the Magic Kingdom, because you have to park off-site and a bus takes you over, you get, I, I'm not sure the amount of time, I think it's 15 minutes of walk time. Um they wouldn't do that for us at Hollywood Studios. And they kept it, – it It was never a rarity. They kept doing this more and more and more as the park was getting busier. And so it always kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. And then if I was – where I worked at the Backlot Tour, if I was out directing a show, um, you know, the shows are 10 to 12 minutes long um, and nobody bumped me out before I gave the all clear for the safety for the people to come into the show, I potentially – if I was off at two, gave the all clear at one fifty eight, I'm not gonna get to clock out to like two twenty. So then there's gonna be a mark on my record card for clocking out late, but also they're not gonna pay me for that time. And I went to a manager to ask, I was like, Well, can you clock me out for the time I worked? And the guy the manager multiple times said to me, It's like a dollar. Do you want me to just give you a dollar? And I'm like, That that's not the point of the matter. Is the point of the matter is that it's a repeated thing that's happening. And so if it's 10 minutes every single day, five days a week, that's almost an hour now that you owe me for. And plus, I want that reported for like how many hours I work because that rolls into how much accrued time off I get and how much like ADOs you get, stuff like that. So it was very carelessly taken care of. And it's one of those nobody wants, nobody wanted to get their hands involved in it. So Now, this sounds to me more like resort workers, though. According I According to this report, yeah, it seems, yeah. To be it seems just like resort and so stop your whining. Uh, yeah. Here's your dollar. <laughs> well, I, it did sound like because they talked about side work and stuff like that, or not side work, but what they refer to it as there. But yeah. I just it'll. I just hope for their sake that it, you know it's better kept and paid attention to in all areas of business for that purpose. You know, well, if they got to come up with four million dollars, I bet it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. I agree. All right. All right. They'll do for that story. All right, our second news story. Disney looking for confidentiality in, quote, toxic employee document court case. The Walt Disney Parks and Resorts may possess alleged toxic employee documents, and a Disney security guard is suing the company to ask to see her file. Disney claims that while they will hand over some information, it is necessary that some things remain confidential. According to the Orlando Sentinel, the employee is Zonia Book, 
a Colombian woman who claims that Disney has, quote, discriminated against her and retaliated when she complained. Additionally, Book is accusing a security director, Melissa Merklinger, of sexual harassment. Disney wanted a confidentiality agreement, but Zonia Book's attorney, Jerry Gurley, denied that request. He laughing? had a rough life in, he <laughs> he had a rough life in high school. Really? Gurley has also filed a written request, written request with the court to be granted access to Disney's toxic employee documents on his client. Gurley believes that these documents are crucial in providing, in proving that the discrimination may or may not have happened. Disney has now taken the issue of confidentiality to the court by asking if the information can be required to remain private. Disney claims the importance of these documents staying private will protect other employees' information as well as security practices and strategies that they don't want to be public knowledge. The security director, Melissa Merklinger, found a superior, super, former supervisor to Zonia Book is requ requesting that the judge make Book, quote, provide her cell phone to a third-party for forensics expert. To a third-party forensics expert. This is due to Book's claim that she used her phone to take pictures of Melissa Merklinger trying to kiss her. Oh my God, this is like an episode of Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Zonia Book has produced images of this incident on paper, but hasn't shown the original images from her phone. Let's Mer think about the logistics of that for a minute. Someone's attempting to kiss you and you're taking pictures of it, and that doesn't <laughs> stop you. <laughs> Merklinger has denied that this is what, oh my gosh, I completely lost Denied it. that this is what has taken place and yeah, that she's saying that. that the photos on paper were doctored. Right, exactly. Um, and she never tried to kiss her, but she doctored these papers, which again, you know, trying to Photoshop someone trying to kiss you seems like a lot of just know, while you you're know, taking a picture. I, I, I have no, I, basically I have no idea what I'm talking about here, but my gut in hearing this story is that this has nothing to do with privacy or security this has to do with if this gets out they are going to look horrible if this toxic employee file mm -hmm. gets out i bet there is some really incendiary and salacious stuff and i think what they are afraid of is other people who have papers in this file are going to turn around and sue the company that's what this sounds like to me yeah. i could be wrong again i don't know there's Maybe. also another level to this too if some of the information in there borders on illegal. I mean, you're talking about employees who may have done things that the company doesn't want to get out. I, you, you just you know? don't know. Right. But it sounds like the company. it sounds like if they're going to this level to protect this document, whatever's in this, good. Um, and we then shouldn't you have, have named it something else. Toxic employee, if I hold yeah, it. Really. I want to look. Yeah, it should be like the Sunshine and Rainbows file or right. something. Just so don't look here. Um, but didn't, didn't this happen like a couple years ago that she was supposedly kissed? Does it say in there? Because the part of that word says... It say when the incident occurred. Um, with taking the pictures, every so often, probably once a week at least, I download all the pictures off my phone. So what are you going to say? Hey, I downloaded them off my phone and I know that they could... You know, all that CSI stuff, they can go back in and see it. But does that mean you're guilty because you don't have the picture on your phone anymore? Well, I guess, yeah, I guess what this person is saying is that the picture that was taken or no picture was taken, she printed these out and somehow doctored them to make it look incriminating against her. And she wants to prove that they're not real pictures. Well, that's the Spring, the Jerry Springer part, you yeah. know, where she was trying to kiss me and I took a picture of her trying to kiss me and stop <laughs> kissing me. I don't want to kiss you. I, I just, it's whatever. But um, very interesting. I, I think, um, you know, I, I used to say that, that Disney pretty much got their way with local judges. I haven't seen that lately. I haven't seen that happening a lot lately. So I wonder... I wonder um, whether or not they are going to order this held or because if they don't, you know, you know that the lawyer for the other side is going to release this stuff. I'm waiting for the toxic employee book <laughs> to make it right into public. So I, I think the moral of the story here is people don't name your child Zonia. <laughs> Please don't name your child toxic. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to read. <laughs> There's like an X in there, and I don't know. It just was really hard. All right. All right, our third and final news story. 
Disney addresses relatability of Pandora for guests who aren't fans of Avatar. Kevin, listen to this. I, it, you know what? This has my name written all over it. really that. does. In 2011, the year after The Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened at Universal Studios, Disney announced their Avatar project. However, Pandora, the world of Avatar, is missing something that The Wizarding World had at its onset, a large devoted fan base. It's been almost eight years since the film's release, and with sequels suffering a string of delays, there is some skepticism in regards to how much enthusiasm the public will have for the new area. The Orlando Sentinel has reported on, on what Disney's expectations are in appealing to those who are unfamiliar with or lack passion for the film franchise. Quote, we've been really quite scrupulous about the fact that you don't need to know a thing in order to experience the or and enter the land explained Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde. It is meant to be understood emotionally, reacted to, navigated through, and appreciated by a person who has absolutely no access to the pre-existing story. The setting of Pandora, the world of Avatar, is actually a decade after the original film took place. Rohde expects the emotional impact and cultural depth of Pandora to resonate with guests. He says in regards to Pandora's 156-foot floating mountains, quote, you have these spectacular objects all around you that, if you think for a moment, are just spectacular tour de forces and deliberately made to evoke emotion, to make you feel awe. He also thinks the Avatar-inspired land will be a natural complement to Disney's Animal Kingdom with their shared message of conservation. Um, I think there's a lot more that just sort of reinforces what we said uh, previously, but basically what he's saying is that you don't really have to know anything about Pandora or Avatar to appreciate the new land. And, uh, you know, it's... Look, I, I'm I, I, I'm on record, you know, everybody knows what I think about this. I think it's James Cameron and Joe Rohde, and I think it's going to be amazing, and I'm really excited about it. I really enjoyed the movie. I'm not, I'm not going to consider myself a huge Avatar fan. I really enjoyed the movie, enough to watch it a couple of times. Uh, and I'm very excited about this because I'm a theme park fan and Joe Rohde is making something new. Yeah, really? And that's enough for, you had me there. Then you, you, James Cameron's in there and they're spending all this money and all this new technology and, um, okay, boy, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Has, I don't care whether it's Avatar or not. It's got these guys involved in it and I'm a theme park fan. I want to see what they come up with. And I, I personally think, I'll go in with an open mind, but I personally think it's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, but to somebody who's never seen the movie, telling them they get to ride a banshee. Well, but I, I think everybody's skepticism is understandable. Um, but here's what I think is going to happen. I think people are going to experience this. I think people are going to find a lot to love about it. I think it's going to be well done. <clears throat> but I think the real impact of this is going to happen when the sequels start to hit. Unlike, you see, the comparison is made here to Wizarding World. Uh, keep in mind that those lands opened pretty much at the end of that franchise. This is opening pretty much at the beginning of this one. There are, what, four additional films being filmed right now. Yeah, but they're not coming out for, what, until two, 2020? At but least, it's, yeah. it, it, That and, land and is going to be there for 20 years, so yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter when the sequels yeah, come out. Yeah, it's... I think what you end up, what's end, what's going to end up happening, <clears throat> is it's going to be. I mean, especially initially, everybody's going to want to go check it out, and then as the sequels start hitting, you're going to see interest swell. That's that's a lot of delayed gratification for Disney. Disney's not usually good about delayed gratification. I think um, I have to say this though. Let's think about think about Disney in general. Why is it all of a sudden things have to be related to a movie? Right. When you think about what the Imagineers worked with, you know, 45 years ago, almost 50 years ago now, 60 years ago for Disneyland, there wasn't a lot of film franchises for them to base rides and attractions on. So the fact that, you know, people have to use their imagination to enjoy something doesn't seem that far fetched to me. I look think... at something like, let me just finish real quick. Look at something like Spanish Mountain. How many people have seen Song of the South? Right, that's a very good point. Right, so that's yeah. a you very can ride good point. That you ride. can't get it. You can't. You can't rent it. Yeah, so you can ride that ride, enjoy the song, enjoy the characters in it, without knowing the movie and being a fan of the movie. I just think that we're playing too much on 
the movie driving traffic when I think Disney does a good job of... Now, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. Do anything so. But I enjoyed Harry Potterville. I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> That's from the It's a Wonderful Life. Yes. Well, I was going to say... I've been a big Disney fan for years, and only until the last couple of years have I seen any of the Disney movies. And when I went back to see a movie like um, Beauty and the Beast, when I went to be our guest, oh, okay, I get it now. But I got the, you know, I got what they were trying to do without ever seeing the movie. So I asked last week if I should go see the movie. But now that they're saying I don't need to, I want to go see what the Imagineers did. Right. That they created this world. And then after I go and I see the bioluminescence and the waterfalls and this and that, I'll probably want to go see the movie. But I want to see it without having seen the movie, and I'll probably love it. I think you'll love the, <laughs> I think you'll love the land, whether or not you like the movie or not. Right, right. That's my opinion, is that it's going to be. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, as Kathy said, I'm a theme park fan. There's a lot of Disney movies I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think your point... Uh, to, uh, to Splash Mountain is really well taken. Um, that Song of the South, I believe, is still not available in the United States. You can get it overseas. But because it has such racially charged overtones to it, um, such racial stereotypes in it, Disney does not release it in the United States. You can so get it if okay. you want to. You can, but I'm saying... You have you to work at it. Yeah. You're you, not going to go to you, iTunes. You're not going to stream it on Netflix. And you and can't you're not get it on Amazon. It. Right. You'd have to really work at it. However, keep in mind that if you work that hard, <laughs> you might find that it's not worth it. <laughs> so I'd be a little disappointed. It's not the best movie ever But, made. you know, again, having seen it, that, that, that attraction is based on that film, and yet... Yeah. A lot of people haven't seen it. And, and how many attractions are based on things that are are, are not based on anything or based on ideas? <laughs> you know, like um, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse is a movie that there, I think very few people of this generation have seen. Something like Shameful. Thunder Mountain. This is not based on a specific movie. It's based on a theme or a, or a general idea of I would venture to say West. that the vast majority of people in the Magic Kingdom do not know that Splash Mountain is based on a movie. Right. I agree. And, you know, some people I've heard say, well, you know, what does Avatar have to do with Animal Kingdom? Uh, James Cameron's intention and the underlying tone of that film is about ecological conservation. Right. Um, and, you know, the bad guys are the strip miners that are trying to, you know, destroy everything. And um, so, uh, you know, it fits right into that message with Animal Kingdom, which is, you know, conservation runs through that through that park. Uh, and again, I, I'm telling you, I'm... Look, and you know what? People may end up hating it, and then I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I think, I think it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm keeping an open mind, and I won't go in, you know, having it... It doesn't have to be fantastic for me. If I don't like it, I'll say I don't like it, but... I, I just I, I just find it hard to believe James Cameron and Joe Rohde together are going to create a big old piece of crap. Um, and I th- also think it's going to take more than one visit to explore and see everything. And every time you go back, you're going to see something you didn't see the well, time before. Well, just especially and this yeah. is this is a, that is a hallmark of Joe Rohde's work. Uh, Alani is a great example. The details in Olani, I don't think you could really research them and find them all in the span of one visit. Um, so much thought went into light fixtures, making sure that everything that was done was authentic to the culture. Um, the grates on the air returns mm-hmm. have hidden Mickeys in them. There are details throughout that resort that are amazing. Um, and that's a hallmark of Joe Rohde's work. It's the same thing at Animal Animal Kingdom's a work. Whether you like the park or not, it is a work of art. Right, right. Um, and it, Joe Rohde is nothing if not an amazing artist. So I'm anxious to see what was done, what has been done with this. Everything I've seen so far really excites me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very, very, uh, I'm really looking forward to the grand opening. Really looking forward to it. So we'll see. We shall see. All right. That'll do it for the news. Shall I vamp, Craig? <clears throat> do we have to vamp, Craig? You do. There was a little bit of a issue for a second that Craig fixed. So yay, Craig. Oh, excuse me, I have a call coming in. <laughs> Houston, can you hear me? Houston? Oh, and there he is. With his cataract so, glasses. Yeah, really. 
<laughs> with this old lady, with this old lady Cadillac. Yeah, this, he had a size dilated. Just, just came from the eye doctor. <laughs> oh, it's looking a little choppy there. Hey, Steve, can you hear me? Steve. Oh, hey guys. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, folks, uh, Steve is over at Hollywood Studios. I asked him to give us a construction update. And yes. uh, what do you have for me, Steve? So right behind me, I'm actually going to turn it around so you guys can have a better view. But right over here is the best view I could find of the Star Wars land construction. Um, right over here, it looks like they're building a new like wall that looks like it's going to be some sort of a building. I talked to uh, a cast member that said that's popped up in the last week or two. Um, and, and this, of course, just... what you're what you're pointing at here is uh, the old New York Street, correct? Streets of America. Correct. Yes. Streets, yes. Of America. Streets of America. So there's still some of the buildings are still left. I'm not sure why this building has kind of remained for a while. It's. Um, I I'm... know why. It's because okay. that, that building. There's a mistake. It, there's a, that building is actually the restaurant, and it was constructed like they're intertwined with each other, so they don't know how to take it down. So they're stuck right now. So they left it because they they realized that when they went to demolish it, so they can't take it down. What restaurant, what restaurant? is that? Sci-Fi Dining. Oh. Yeah. So so that's gonna be really? there for a little bit. So I think it's okay with me if they bulldoze that house. <laughs> they're gonna do is they'll put they'll put a facade on it and make it look like a Star Wars thing. Well, I, I, from the way it was built, is I think that's the wall. The facade is the wall. I don't think it was a facade. I think they built the wall. So, like, it's the only area that that's an actual functioning wall. So I think that's where they, like, shot themselves in the foot a little bit. But I, I, they also can't close the restaurant, I don't think, until they have more offerings that go in. Or otherwise, yeah. it'll be another closure. I haven't been this bored about a wall coming down <laughs> since the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Steve, there's your answer to that. There you go. Um, so, basically, there's uh, cranes that go really far back there's probably three or four cranes back there i actually also was on the other side uh near um toy story mania where it looks like it's going to go back into being toy story land um i there wasn't much to see back there except for there was some um uh, some steel uh like barbs coming up out of the ground but that was about it over there so looks like toy story land is a little bit further behind construction wise than star wars land but uh yeah, I mean, it's it's coming along. The, the cast members say they come here and they see something new every day. So that's how, a good sign. How are the crowds today? Uh, they're somewhat heavy. It's definitely spring break. Um, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Waits are 30, 40 minutes. I mean, Star Tours is about 40. Um, Tour Story Mania is, was about 40. I think it's really helped since they've had the third right. uh, tr track in there. Um so it's not too bad. Some of the meet and greets were shorter. Olaf was five minutes. Minnie and Mickey were 15. So it's not uh, not horrible, but not. it's definitely not people just walking on rides today. All right. Well, cool. Go have, uh, go have a good time by yourself. And, All right. Uh, I will do. And, just, uh, actually, I will just add one more thing, uh, just because I'm personally excited about it. But at One Man's Dream... Uh, the cast member, I asked her today if she thought that the One Man Stream film at the end of the attraction will ever come back. Because it seems like it's an endless stream of movie trailers. And she seemed to think, she was like, I don't want to confirm anything for you. But she seemed to think that it might be coming back after the Beauty and the Beast trailer leaves. So oh, that'd be that's good. Yeah. That's such a great, uh, such a great uh, film. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. that Walt film. So, All right, Steve. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. One of the things, when the way we come into property, for the most part, is off of Osceola Parkway. And when you come off that ramp, you can really see the back of the studios yeah. and how mm -hmm. it's just flat and how huge that piece of land is. We always comment. We think, it's gigantic back yeah. there. And now with all those trees gone, you can really see the construction. No, nope. Pretty impressive. Now, what did they say? 2020 is when they're estimating? Yeah. Because the last movie is 2019, so we're thinking it was in conjunction with the last movie, the last trilogy movie. I just, I, I'm having a hard time believing two years. I can't. It's, there's nothing there. Yeah. Uh, unless they would have to be right. Because I mean, we're still seeing, Dirt. you know, part of the New York, uh, the the streets of America building is still standing. Um, so it's part of the wall. <laughs> it's part of the wall. I was fascinated by how close he was to. Um, 
the Muppet ride and that building from Streets of America, it seemed like it was with other stuff gone. It felt like it was really right next to each yeah. other. Yeah. And when you were in the park before, it felt like it was a completely different land. So that gives you the perspective of how well the Imagineers. Well, it's like when you go backstage at Epcot and you realize that uh, the seas is pretty much right next to the entrance turnstile. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, for for as much as I have complained about construction and the amount of it and the time it takes, I got to tell you, I'm so excited with how much new stuff is coming. Um, I think about that all the time with Disney Springs, how upset I was with the, the traffic. People, I mean, let's be honest. They did not plan at all for the impact construction on Disney Springs was going to have. And it was impossible to navigate that area if you were in a car. It just was ridiculous. Uh, sat in traffic one, one Friday night for an hour mm. to, between the boardwalk and Hotel Plaza Boulevard. However, now um, it's brilliant. Now it's fantastic. Yeah. And I think, and every time I start thinking about like how under construction Hollywood Studios is, I try and think about that. That, yeah, it's a pain in the neck right now. But now Disney Springs has become one of my favorite places. I love going down there to eat. I love going down there to shop. I love going down there for movies. I love being down there. I love hanging out down there. And I'm down there a lot more now than I ever was before the switch. So I'll take, you know, two years to build a parking garage and bad traffic um, if what I'm going to get is on the level of what Disney Springs was. So We were there the other night and we went to dinner at Morimoto. Love Morimoto. But you can see the Edison coming together. Yeah. Mm. And it looks huge. Yeah. Um, it's got that sort of daily planet look to it. I can't wait. It's that sort of yeah. That intrigues deco. Me. Yeah. yeah, that Art Deco 1930s look. I love that. Mm, it's like one of my favorite, like Empire State Building. I mean, it's just a monument to that. Well, I come from Albany, New York, and we have something called the Alfred E. Smith Building, which is very much that style. And that's the same Al Smith as the dinner, the Al Smith dinner, the right. political dinner. So, cool. All right. Let us now, from Al Smith, move on to rapid fire. And I think John's exhausted from the party, so he doesn't have one. No rapid fire for me. So we no. will, and that's okay, because he did a great job on the party. So we will, we will overlook the fact that he did, he did not have a, a rapid no, fire today. But now, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, the pressure is on you. Yeah, I don't feel it. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Had a big opening weekend. Big opening it weekend. It was the sixth largest opening ever. Uh, there are five movies ahead of it. Does anybody want to take a guess at what they might be? One's a Harry Potter movie, yeah. Um, no. no. No? It actually just beat out a Harry Potter movie. So wait. Batman versus Super. What no, are we, no, What no. are we betting again? Tell me again. What are we guessing? I was listening. Beauty and the Beast opened at $174.8 million. That's an estimate. Some people are saying 170. Some are 100 and saying it's 174.8. Um, so there are five movies ahead of it. The Force Ti- Awakens. Titanic. The Force Awakens is number one. That is the largest opening weekend ever at 20, 247, almost 248 million. One of the... Um, Jurassic World. Jurassic World is number two. Wow, yeah. At 208. Almost two hundred and nine million. One of the Avengers movies. One of the Iron Man movies. The uh, uh, Marvel's Avengers in two thousand twelve opened up at two oh seven and a half. Some uh, Iron Man three. Nope. Stop looking. I'm, I'm gonna guess <laughs> three. So I'm going to give you the other two. Okay. The other two are Age of Ultron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said Avengers movies. He did. Okay, you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> And Captain America: Civil War. Uh, all Marvel. But it opened and the, uh, worldwide. All Disney, mm-hmm. with the exception of Jurassic World. All Disney. Yeah. The yeah. worldwide adjusted total gross for the opening weekend of Beauty and the Beast is three hundred and fifty-two million dollars so far on a hundred and sixty million dollar production budget. Do you think it has to do with the amount of advertising? Over the, sh- I, no, I think, think it's the love of. I think it's, it's the built in the love built into yep. the yeah. original. Absolutely, movie. absolutely, and the reviews have been in large part fantastic, except from our own. I'm not going to say they're fantastic because it sits on Rotten Tomatoes at seventy percent. So that's 
That to me is that's a still, state. but that okay, no, that's a not. Fantastic says ninety percent, and Fantastic are the reviews for like Logan. Well, see, when I look at like you know when movie. when I look at the New York Times that doesn't normally gush about films, when they give it a good review, I pay attention to that. There are other outlets that I really don't care about. New York Times, I care about, um, and you know a lot of what I've heard has been very positive. It's been some mixed stuff, but nothing quite as as negative. Uh, you guys really did not like it. I don't know. I am not. That's that's unfair too, because that's what the people said. Is that I didn't. I would give this movie a sixty-five percent. If you my, got that in high school, you would stay back. That's what I'm saying. And this, the original movie, to me, is probably one of the best, if not the best, Disney animated film that they've ever made. Because it's a strong story. It moves at a brisk pace. Um, it's got wonderful music in it. It's one of the only movies, animated movies, to ever be nominated for Best Picture. Um, and it, it's not unreasonable of me to hold this at that same level. Because this movie is 20 years later, 25 years later, and... Uh, people are enjoying oh, Kathy is throwing you so no, much no, no. shade I, sitting over there and I'm not gonna I'm never gonna put anybody down who enjoys it I'm not gonna say don't go see it that's not my mission here my thing is I'm just saying that there are there are huge issues in this movie that yeah, people I are annoying because they want to enjoy it I haven't seen it yet so I, I can't I can't say I'm excited to see it it's what it, it is by you know I I uh, loved I, I credit the uh, the original the animated one with really kind of sparking my modern day passion for Disney. Um, I want to go see it because I found out that Beast is Lady Mary's husband, Matthew. Yes, it's Matthew from, Crawley. Matthew yeah. Crawley from Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Um, and I love Emma Watson. That and is the gayest sentence I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> well, I went, because you know, I don't watch a lot of Disney movies. So I went because it was a Disney movie. But... At the, you know, the state when they do the stage show at uh, studios, I came home the one time and I said to Katie, I said, you know, when Lumiere, um, you know, he was a real person. And Katie goes, I didn't know that. So I like this version. Spoiler alert. Well, I was just going to say, I like this version <laughs> because if you don't know the story of Beauty and the Beast, this movie tells you. Mm -hmm. And maybe it goes it on. It gives you more background. Yes. And it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. And I know Katie will get it when she sees it. But I had moments in this movie, of course, you know, I'm easy to please, but I laughed. I had tears rolling down my face from hearing the, the traditional music. Um, but I also liked the new things that they put in it. And I liked the little additions. I said, because when they were doing the one part, um, when they were doing Be Our Guest, to me it was no different, you know, when you go to M Mickey's Philhar Magic. And you see the pies coming out at you, right. doing all that. So that was one version of that story. So this was another version. So I didn't need to know what happened in the animated version or hold it up against it. It was just a good movie all by itself. There's a great video clip out there. I tweeted it the other day. Someone sent it to me. Oh, I know. Yeah. And it's James Corden and the cast of Beauty and oh, the Beast that, I love performing that. Beauty and the Beast in a crosswalk in Hollywood. <laughs> That's great. It's it's very, very funny. <laughs> yes, it was very good, too. Well, it's it's a, 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 another in a string of massive hits that the studios put out, regardless of what you think of the movie. Uh, can't argue with the box office at over $350 million worldwide now. Uh, so it's a hit, and it's all just the latest in a string of them. I was surprised mm -hmm. when I sent this as my rapid fire that I didn't get an email telling me this was going to be a news story. And I was telling Rhino, too, um, Disney, how Disney does things, one of the things I like is they've now changed the beast at Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest, the beast is different than oh, it really? was before. To reflect the live show, live movie version. So he now matches as the movie. To the character. Yeah, oh, so okay. he's wow, like cool. lost weight, and he's got horns now. And so does Bell look like Justin Bieber? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just like the again, it's the attention to detail that, that right. I liked about the movie. Awesome. All right, thank you, Kevin. Kathy. Okay, talking about construction, there's a new on ramp from Osceola Parkway to World Drive. A uh, new on ramp from eastbound Osceola Parkway to northbound World Drive will open today. With the opening of this ramp, the Osceola Parkway traffic signal that allowed vehicles to turn left to reach the main auto plaza of Disney's Hollywood Studios and northbound World Drive will be removed. So you know how you used to go and it was sort of like you went over the top of 
the Hollywood Studios sign. Mm-hmm. That's going away, but now there's a big onward. That whole area down there is just stripped down to nothing. The four corners in front Amazing. of the wide world of sports. Yeah. I drove by it the other day, and I kind of had to stop and think, where am I? It doesn't look... No. It looks nothing like it used to. But a lot of this, from my understanding, is that this is in preparation for moving the turnstile and putting the, what are they calling, the flyover or the flyby yeah. for the resorts. So that's why there's so much construction is that they have to really completely refigure that whole area. Yeah, and it's sort of move. sad if this is your first time coming to Disney. It's it looks like, you know, all of Walt Disney World is under construction, but come back in a couple of years and it's going to be awesome. And what really I think is disturbing is the amount of trees that are gone. Yes. It used to feel so... Intimate is yeah. the word I use. Old yes. Florida to me yes. out there. And now it's like being in an intersection on an L.A. freeway in some yeah. areas. It is. Well, yeah. They're good about replanting trees, yeah. though, so I think that we'll see that. All right. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. The Lady Clavin. Mine has to do with, um, okay, I'm conflicted here. It has to do with Pandora, which I am just, eh, for... But I am excited that it sounds like there's going to be some healthy food options coming to Animal Kingdom. So we got to look at the menu from the Satuli Canteen in Pandora, uh, the world of Avatar. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't speak the Navi language, and nor do I care to. Um, but uh, it's basically showing us that he um, says it with such attitude. Yet this is I the guy. I don't care. This to is go. this is the guy who's going to going to run around Orlando in a few weeks in a Power Rangers outfit. Hey, I like what I like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, the reviews for that are bad. They're at, I'm they're just coming out right now. I'm not, and it, it doesn't matter. All I care is if I enjoy it, and that's how I hope everybody feels when they see Beauty and the Beast. They don't care what anybody says as long no, as they. They're really it. bad. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the I interior. Just to know I haven't read I a single my place no, now. I, I lost my place. Um, I haven't read a single review. There's right gonna now. be banshee buns <laughs> and, and yeah. luminescent fries. Yeah, going it, on. no, no, no. There's it, it. Actually, is like they're they're trying to go a healthy, um, wholesome grains, fresh vegetables, healthy proteins. Um, oh my gosh, where I. There's a picture I'm looking at, but basically it's like you can customize the dish so it can be like quinoa based or root vegetables, and then you can get um, chicken or, or fish on top of it, and then the pods that John's talking about are bao buns with either like cheeseburger, which is interesting, or uh, vegetable curry served over root vegetable chips, crunchy coleslaw. It actually looks really interesting. Root vegetable chips? Yeah. This is going to be one of those reservations that's easy to get. <laughs> no, it's it's not a sit down. Potato a, chips, people. It's a quick service, but it's also the first <laughs> one that's going to start this mobile order um, system where you can order the food through your My Disney Experience app and pay for it, and you just walk right up, pick it up. 180 and days out. in advance. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's going to be. I order my bow buns cold and for six months from now, please. Did I want the cheeseburger bow buns. When they had it at studios. Like a year or two years ago, that you could do it through a mobile, through a, through a mobile app and no. order your lunch, and then you hit the order button when you were like ready, the, when you're like there. Backlot Express, but they brought the food right out to your table. Oh, that's cool. It was like you'd have already paid for it. Well, I love that because I'll tell you right now, I haven't waited in the line at Chipotle for like three years because they were the first place that I saw that had a successful app that you could just do the order, say what store you're going to. You can just go in and pick it up and it's all paid for. And the one near my house always has this massive line. So I love the idea that Disney is going to start doing this too. So it kind of – if if that the My Disney Experience app is – good for nothing else than this i'm you know I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm thrilled so and then actually like this people know if you watch those vlogs all the time i'm always complaining there's i'm trying to find the healthiest thing around so i am excited to actually try some of this food now whether it's good or not that remains a cheeseburger bow buns i know that, and, that, and that, that seems chips, weird which is just starch i mean this is not <laughs> the not quinoa re- is what i look forward to oh good god it's a superfood Pick it's like Brussels sprout chips. It's or, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> root vegetables, meaning like um, potato or carrot, 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 carrot yeah. right, Eat. right. Anything that Elon makes in the this root vegetable dish that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good. All right. Thank you, Rhino Craig. Okay, so uh, we now have new details on the third parking garage that's planned for uh, Disney Springs. So we told you about it a while back ago, and we said back then it would have 2,000 parking spaces, but now we actually found out it will have 3,000. 
uh, additional covered parking spaces for guests and Disney Springs cast members, and also uh, people who work at casting and partners. Um, it'll have the same technology as all the other garages, and uh, so the parking lot for the casting building will close April 1st, and uh, then things will get crazy again for a little while, and hopefully That's it'll open in the next the two years. That's where parking garage outside of casting? So. Somewhere right outside of there, oh I'm sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're a cast member. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if you're going to Disney Springs. Yeah. Because well. then you have to run across eight lanes of traffic. Yep. Well, I'm sure they'll build something. They've oh, got they've a bridge already there. Yeah, so. well, I was thinking it was going to be like Frogger. All right. Before we, uh, before we wrap up, I've asked Rhino to talk a little bit, briefly, about an experience that he and Eli, his partner, had a couple weeks ago. Uh, I had been uh, contacted by uh, someone in- involved in the management of Portobello, and uh, they appreciated my review of uh, Paddlefish um, when I went back to eat with my family and uh, offered us a couple spots at a cooking class. So I, I, wanna, I wanna preface this by saying that we were comp this. Normally, normally we would not review anything that we did not pay for, but um, if we do, I just make sure that we are very upfront about that, we're transparent about it. So, um, but that's actually ends up being kind of the surprise, one of the surprises of this experience for Rhino was what it actually cost to do it and what you got oh, in yeah. exchange for it. So, um, give us a brief uh, a brief look at uh, your experience at Portobello. Um, okay, so uh, I didn't know what to expect from this. Pete just said, "Hey, do you want to do this cooking class?" And I was like, "I don't like to cook, or I don't know how to cook really." Um, but then he offered for Eli to go, which was great. Um, and so we showed up at this class. It was on a Saturday. It was from the the thing online said it would be from 12 to 2 o'clock at the Portobello uh, restaurant, the Italian restaurant in Disney Springs, um, which we frequent. We've been to several times. Um, it's a good place. And so we showed up, and it is a for a ravioli cooking class with Chef Tony Mantuano, who is a uh, James Beard um, award winner, and he was in the second season of Top Chef Masters. So you go to the restaurant, you show up, and it's in the back half of the restaurant. They have everyone kind of sitting family style, um, and then the chefs have this long table that's at the the front of the restaurant or the front of this section. And um, he, uh, uh, Chef Tony, came around and he. Um, said hello to everybody, you know, shook his hand. He was very personable. Um, when you sit down at the table, there's also some food on the table waiting for you. It's a this like flat yellow, br- I say yellow because it's got a lot of butter on it, but it basically looks like a pizza. Um, and and that's essentially what it is, uh, he told us, is it's like um, a pizza without the cheese or the sauce on it. I forget the word he bread. used. Yeah, <laughs> bread. That's what it's called, bread. Um but no, so you have that, and they greet you with a glass of champagne, and then the, he told the ladies, come around and pour another glass of champagne. So before we even get started, I've had like two glasses of champagne, and um, then he starts talking about how they're making raviolis and how you, you make raviolis, and so him and his two um, assistant chefs are up there, and they are um, uh, chopping up. So we did two types. There was a, like, I think it was... Like a, like a spinach beef ravioli. And pork. Yeah, and then a spinach and ricotta um one and he was describing what goes into making it and how you make the dough but on your table you also have the um ingredients how to make the dough yourself how to make the food yourself and all this stuff um because essentially in the cooking class you're just going to uh fold fill the ravioli and fold it over and close it so there's these long tables that are set up on the next section over the restaurant and it's got um like a a uh paintbrush and a scoop and then um some butter and some flour and is that butter or an egg wash it looks like an egg egg wash. oh egg wash i'm sorry yeah. yeah it was egg sorry um and so you you go around the table after this after you've um you've watched him make it and he lets you go up and take pictures all that stuff and um you gather around and then you basically essentially they bring up bowls of the two ingredients and you fill the uh and then the, the dough as well and then you fill them so um They'll give you pretty much as many of those rolls of dough as they had. There, it was a pretty full class, and um, Eli and I made one section of each of them. So we okay, how many raviolis left, would they, it was like section? four to five for each piece of the dough. So essentially, we each made twenty 
Nice. So, and we left to get, you know, and I think it might even be more because I think Eli might have done an extra one. And you take this with you. Oh, yeah. They so so they have like to-go containers with your names already written on them on the table and the, the servers will come around and bring those to you. And so um, so you do that. They take them with you. Yeah, you're not – this isn't what you're eating while you're here. And Right. I was going to say yeah. you're also having food. Which I didn't – I was didn't know that So I, because I didn't know anything that was going on for this. So there's a whole like three-course meal involved with this too. So um, you go back to the table and you've got um, – if you've been to Portobello before, there's like a round uh, loaf of bread they give you with the roasted garlic. Yeah, it's delicious. Um, yeah, super good. That's waiting for you along with this massive uh, tray of uh, antipasta – platter um it's so it's got prosciutto um suppressata parmesan reginald all these things i can't say correctly anyway it's a lot of stuff on this this tray canapes no canapes no 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 canapes unfortunately Uh, (laughs) but um so you've got these and it's just me and eli at this one table that we're at too so some tables they're like sharing this all around with them and so they there's quite a portion for us and then they do family style of pasta bolognese, which is slow cooked beef and pork meat sauce. Which no, it's is, so good right now. So good. I'm so damn hungry at the yeah, moment. I've had it, their bolognese. It is. Awesome. It is really, really good. So between me and, and Eli, both we actually took about half of that home with us still. So it doesn't look like a lot in the photo, but it's it's a lot more in that bowl than there is. And then they bring out a platter of cannolis for dessert, and there are eight oh. cannolis. These little mini cannolis. Different one, different Again, types. just for him and Eli. <laughs> yeah, just for... No, seriously. And so... That's hysterical. I just kept asking the lady for to-go containers because I was like, I can't eat all this, but I want to try everything. And so we left at the end of that with all that stuff. Oh, and there's no photo of it, but a massive salad, too. There was this really big, really fresh um, salad. And, and they're also serving you wine... In addition to oh, the yes. champagne yeah. they gave and in the then, beginning. Then when you go to sit down after you've made your raviolis, you, you right. could you get the <laughs> wine. It's just very like – I don't know what I expected was going to happen. I thought we were going to make and eat the raviolis right there. I thought that's what it was. And it was just this whole other experience that – so I'm Googling it while I'm sitting there, and it's $55 a person. And I'm Can like, you imagine? no really? way. Is this an ongoing That's, thing? Yeah, yeah, they do it all the time, they said. And and so they even said during that event, they were like, go to the website. They do it with different chefs. So it's not always uh, Chef Tony. Um, but he's he's coming back for another one too. But yeah, 55 bucks. Get like four people so you get your own little table at the end. But I I, mean, I had like two glasses of champagne and, and that glass of wine. And, and Eli might have had more than that. But um, so that alone – I'm sure in that restaurant, let's just say it's seven bucks each for those. So that's twenty one dollars right there. And then I, there's no way my meal was only thirty dollars. You know what I mean? So plus I'm getting to take home that stuff. So I actually had that leftover fed me later that night as well. And I still have the raviolis in my freezer. It sounds like the ravioli making was just sort of an excuse. It was to yeah, like sort of have dinner. It wasn't really it a was. cooking it, lesson. It was more like a fun yeah activity. And you can tell there were a couple of people there that had done it before. And so this is why I recommend maybe not going solo. You could if you want if you want to make some new friends. But I described it in the video as very like Connecticut housewife sipping mimosas on a Monday afternoon. It was. I didn't care for the people that were sitting right next to me. They were very pretentious. And there was one woman that wouldn't shut up when I was trying to film the chef. Who the chef, the professional chef, celebrity chef, talking about how he makes the food? She kept questioning how he was making the food. Wow! And I was like, "Oh, idiot!" And she's the one who kept walking back and forth in front of my camera because I thought she just wanted to cross because she said, "Excuse me," the first time, but then she's going back and forth. I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm going to push you over." Into and uh, he d- Rhino did an amazing job with the video of this experience. You can check that out on a YouTube channel. We'll have a link to it in the show notes as well. I was stunned. That it was only fifty five dollars a person for this. Yeah. When you talked about the amount of food that they fed you. Yeah. Uh, not to mention what you brought home. Right, and 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 then you know, and it, the chef was very personable, and I got to we got to meet and take a photo with him. Although um, Eli looks really just like yeah, I'm, I'm Eli's going to be over so it. angry. I included that photo because <laughs> it, he clearly what didn't know she was taking the photo yet, so he gets very picky about what photos look like. And <laughs> whatever he doesn't watch the show, he doesn't know. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I thought. Like, especially if you're really into, like, you know these chefs, you know. Um, like, I love Top Chef. This is just an earlier chef, uh, Top Chef Masters that I hadn't seen yet. So um, I get really into that stuff. And so I was excited for that. And then this whole thing, I just, I'm blown away. Like, I literally, as I was leaving, I was like, man, we should, like, get some friends together and we should do this. Like, we should schedule this and just do it in this event with other people. It's the same price, essentially, as just going out to one of the restaurants for dinner at Disney Springs. So why not? 
take some food home with you or you know what do you think the maximum capacity was well i checked online too this morning you can actually rent out the entire event yourself as well if you want and that was like 300 dollars or something it was something not a lot of money that, remember how like, many, that doesn't work out right remember now. how many people it was i want to say there's probably there were probably at least like 50 people there oh, wow where do you do this how do you sign up for maybe it? like 30 to 50 they kept saying on the website but they didn't tell me what the website was so i think it's on the actual portobello restaurant website as opposed to like the disney world website um um, yeah, I would imagine. Because I, str- I I actually – it was difficult for me to Google and find like a direct link to the information for this class. So I, I'm just referring to it as like Disney Springs best well, kept we'll, hidden secret. We'll, uh, we'll find that and we'll put that on the show notes page as well uh, with, the, with this show. But um, this – I think you're right just based on what you're saying. I want to go try it. But um, I think you're right. This might be a, like a great hidden gem at Disney oh, yeah. Springs. Something really different to do. Um, and – just kind of have a nice, nice Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Um, it does sound like something that would be fun. So, all right. Well, thank you for that, Rhino. Um, and like again, you can check out Rhino's video on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Diz Unplugged. I believe that is live now, Craig? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah? Okay. And that is going to do it for our show. Uh, it is great to be back. Um, I miss it when I'm gone that long. You probably don't miss me, Craig, but... I miss being here. No, we do miss you. Oh, uh, yes, of course. For sure. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back with you again next time with another edition of The Diz Unplugged. Have a great week, everyone. And please remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Bye.